The heel of Italy. Where ice creams are massive. It is an ice cream. Yeah. What else could it be? People burp loudly. <laughs> and drinks make you do this. Whoa. We're Charlotte and Luke, and we had ourselves a little trip around the south of Italy, visiting some of the most beautiful towns we've ever been to. After almost missing our flight and a lot of sweaty palms during turbulence, our first stop on the list was Lecce. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Everything. If you don't believe us, just have a look at that stress vein. The... Are you going to vein when you're tired? We were way too excited to go to bed straight away, so we ventured out in order to feed the tired vein. And of course, our first meal was a traditional Italian classic from the cutest nonna one could ever imagine. If that nonna's name was Ronald McDonald. So hungry. <laughs> this is beer. Mental. It was now like 2am, so it made sense to hit the hay and begin exploring tomorrow. No star. The next morning, we left our lovely Airbnb, which we would highly recommend, to venture into the centre of town. You may be surprised to know that Lecce isn't famous for just its Mac EDs. The 2,000-year-old city's Baroque-style architecture has led to its nickname, the Florence of the South. The world-famous traveller Thomas Ashe even went as far as calling it the most beautiful city in Italy. We just uh, intercepted a tour guide. Um, I know we shouldn't, be, shouldn't do that really, but we got a free nugget of knowledge, which was that Napoleon was here. Napoleon was here. Not dynamite, the actual French you know, dictator man. <laughs> what do you think that means? I don't know anything about Italian. It looks like a lady danced with a tarantula. These pictures were showing the history of tarantulism in Salento. Apparently, mainly women would claim to have been bitten by a spider, and the only way they could be cured was be to dance the pizzica for up to days at a time. With our organs full of lecce facts, we decided to walk into the square right next to the famous amphitheatre for a spot of breakfast. Something on my left. Home Alone 2 vibes. It's really nice. Had to get some Factor 50 though from a local pharmacy. Cost 25 euros, scandalous. Cheeky. I'm not sure if you've ever played Assassin's Creed 2, Ezio Auditore and all that. It's, lit it's a bit, I know it's not Florence, but it's kind of like old school proper. Okay, okay, okay. I was in a toilet just now, having a wee nothing else. And a guy tried to come in through the door and he opened the door when I was in there. I just panicked and went, scusi. And it kind of makes you realise that you want to learn the language. Um, just to get up to those awkward situations. I just said, excuse me, and then just closed the door slowly in his face. Opens the bag. Pigeon khaki everywhere. Join in, you know the words. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks, stop it. Stop it, stop it. Thank you, thank you. Nailed it! I want to touch every dog here. Three words to describe Lecce so far. Um, pretty... <laughs> Snotty. Do you hear that? A man just blew all of his whole nose out. But it's not all snot, promise. These were some of the most stunning streets we have ever walked down. But they were nothing compared to the Basilica di Santa Croce. It took over 100 years to be built and is considered an architectural masterpiece by some. With hotspots like this, it's no wonder explorer Thomas Ashe once called Lecce the most beautiful city in Italy. So we've had a bloody lovely time in Lecce. Yeah, it's good. What have you done? Uh, seen loads of cracking dogs. Yeah, go walked in on having a pee. <laughs> Always the men's. Uh, had too many cappuccinos. Went to La Basilica. Saw loads of lovely art. Yeah, lovely. Now we're going to a wedding, which is in... About 20 minutes away. I can't remember what it's called. What anyway. It's called. Anyway, see, see there. you there. Doing a bang, eh? Hey, baby, I think it's
Because we could now use Google, we remembered the place was called Masseria Full Shagnano and was the next stop for a couple of days to celebrate the wedding of our friends Alex and Alex, where the dance moves were a feast for the eyes. But after our five course fest we had after the ceremony, we had no choice but to call in the big guns. So I'm having a rain me to, you know, chill everything out. I think I could actually die, I'm so full. Mm. Once the food had digested a little, instead of a nightcap, a dip in the pool was the perfect way to end the wedding, Wim Hof style. The next morning was like waking up on the set of Mamma Mia, so the hangover was just about bearable. The resident Pooch Salantina may have helped a little bit too, although Charlotte had now become a walking advert for Sunblock. Now have a map of India just <laughs> turned into me. Well, that was a great day, wasn't it? A wedding of many firsts. Many, many firsts. First time adopting quite a chilled out, not showy off the dancing technique. Mm -hmm. First time I nursed a Negroni during the ideas. Yeah, great first, great first. First time I've jumped in a pool after a wedding day at around one o'clock in the morning. That was a good buzz. First time eating not one, not two, but five courses. Yeah, I was, I was full. I'm still full. I'm still full. Um, speaking of full, the prison in Gallipoli is going to be full with us. Because we're going to a prison next, aren't we? We are. Staying in a prison, going to jail. Guilty. Next on our list of the Italian boot was Gallipoli, a seaside town of a very, very, very cool castle. We were too early to check in, so we dropped off our bags and went for a little wander into the old town. was the Biblioteca Comunale e Archivo Storico. Blimey. One of the oldest and the longest named libraries in the Salento region. The underground olive oil mills are also a really cool place to visit and in the 18th century the town of Gallipoli became the biggest maker of olive oil in the Mediterranean. As well as olive oil, Gallipoli is also known for its friendliness to the LGBTQ plus community, hence its unofficial title, Gay Lippoli. About to have your first espresso. Yeah, I actually get quite happy and anxious, but yeah, when in Rome, or when in um, Gallipoli. One sure way to not get caffeine anxiety is to eat with coffee, so a little bruschetta would suffice here. Here we learned that when you have food in Italy, there's a compulsory charge per restaurant for simply going there. This is different to a tip, it's more like the rent of your bum being in the seat, and it's called a coperto. This can range from one to around three euros per person. After some food, it was time to check in. I Bastioni San Domenica was once a prison, before turning into a convent and then later on a school in the 1800s. But instead of thinking about our crimes, learning religious doctrine or algebra, there was something else on our mind, the rooftop bar. Let's try that again. There was something else on our mind, the rooftop bar. <laughs> you live here now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's an impressive view, but Luke's reaction to the blue Mediterranean was nothing compared to this. Oh my god. From him, not me. Look at that. You got teletext. We were literally at like a Roman amphitheatre yesterday. Oh my god, that's that's unbelievable. It's quite cool though, isn't it? A bit. No. It is. No. It is. Why do you need to tell me this? Oh, come on. Are we going to book a flight? <laughs> After binging my favourite show for a couple of hours and some top-notch Italian grub, we hit the hay. The next morning, we were going to venture to the new town, but first, Italian sushi, kinda. <laughs> 
Did you say what's it called? Skinny, skinny swordfish. Skinny swordfish. Carpaccio. What's the verdict? It's really nice. It's really fresh. It's basically like Italian sushi, isn't it? Basically, mm -hmm. it's like raw swordfish. I mean, this is the first meal I've had of the day. I don't think a Greg's sausage roll will really compare anyone. Yeah, it's really good. So today we are venturing out of the old into the new. Yeah, over there. That's the new, the new town, new part of Gallipoli. New part of Gallipoli. Seeing as we're on holiday, breakfast dessert was totally legal. Good thing this giant and uh, totally innocent looking ice cream showed us exactly where we could find the good old gelato. Is it an ice cream one? It is an ice cream. Yeah. What else could it be? One long, massive Home. ice cream. Uh, is this the size of his head? Uno pistachio, uno limon. Now, saying English things in a funny accent apparently means you speak fluent Italian. I can probably tell. I'm not sure if my Italian is that good. Don't worry, it wasn't. Uh, the whole lemon, it's a lovely lemon stuff. Kid the bueno, may not mix the lemon, but I would accept it. A pistachio, because it's a classic. Let's see what happens. Somebody stop this man. He's a wild thing. I've never been so happy in all my life. Chin chin. Salute. Salute. Mm. Oh my god, that's unbelievable. Oh, that lemon. Oh, sweet tart. Mmm. So, we've made a new friend. Um, a gentleman, whilst having our ice cream, has pulled up in his Alfa Romeo. And, uh, I started, I started playing love songs. <laughs> no, that means. No. <laughs> so it's the first time we've been serenaded by someone in an Alfa Romeo. And I think my Italian was telling me that he was saying, first you must play the music to prepare for the love. Otherwise, I, I really don't have a clue. I don't know, he just kind of went, oh yeah, yeah. I do think it was drive-by couples counselling. It was a little bit. That was, it was nice though. Yeah. That was a nice little. Cinema's beautiful, so that's good. Now he's talking to me. Oh. Definitely talking to me when he said that. I mean, it is Gallipoli after all. Full of gelato and love from the Italian man in his Italian car, it's time for a Gallipoli tourist nugget of knowledge. The reasons I booked Gallipoli, my wisdom was that I know that the train system in Italy is fantastic. So Gallipoli has its own little train station that takes you all the way up to Lecce where you can connect to other main places. And it looks pretty darn cute. Yeah, this is getting a little bit cultured and sensible now, so let's introduce you to some more great booze. And where better than this lovely little bar down in the old town, Piculi, which, by the way, makes the best tasting Negroni we have ever had. Whoa. The sun literally sets into the sea here, so a little Aperol spritz, why not? Sorry to make you gel. All refreshed for dinner, we needed something to soak up that booze, to make room for more booze. So this is called Elice, which means sardines, but also it does mean uh, the Italian version of Alice. So this is like ricotta and veg and it's uh, anchovies mixed together. Yeah. Some of these are like arancini balls, uh -huh. so what you'd normally have with like a sort of risotto rice and cheese, yeah. but the rest is like deep fried um, veggies and they are incredible. Oh, isn't there something quite poetic about taking a healthy courgette and deep frying it to within an inch of its healthy little life? Oh. No wonder we reached for the Rennies that night too. The next morning after breakfast, with that bang in view, we headed down to the gorgeous Italian coastline. You can't go anywhere above 20 degrees Celsius as a Welsh person and not have a day at a beach, can you? It's really shallow. It's very light, no 20 I mean, it's a bit warmer than Cab Idris in North Wales, isn't it? Is it acceptable to have a pee? No. Why not? Because the sea's already weed. What? The sea's already weed. What? What do you mean? I really need to pee though. Can I just go now? No. Too late. What? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So 1P will make that so global warming. The hot weather was making me sassy, so we had to get more food to calm everything down. Beach picnic. Sitting all day in the sun made us very sleepy. Back to the hotel we went for a lie down and a nap. And some sea facts, of course. Fast forward to that evening where we had to check an important box off the Italian bingo list. Pizza. Ah, la dolce vita. All is well in the world. Pizza. Love. The last chip. <gasps> the last chip. had a pizza in La Corte. We did. Is that how you say it? La Corte? Yeah. Um, what was it like? It was really good. Thin crust pizza, mm -hmm. obviously. We're in Italy. But do you know what? I have to say, I have to give my hats off to the boys in Chilete at Furness because they have oh, yeah. absolutely recreated the <laughs> That guy's had a Furnace pizza. He definitely has had one. Um, yeah, Furnace pizza is uh, Napoli... Napolitina? Napolitan. Is that the... Neapolitan? Neapolitan. Neapolitan style. Thin, really yeah. nice. And that was like the Furnace perfect. pizza. It was perfect. Which you can get in so... Cardiff Market. Yeah. Ooh, it's gone dark. Another place you went to was, what was it called? La Piccoli. La Piccoli? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Piccolili? I think it means small. Piccolili. <laughs> and it was on one of the side streets of Gallipoli and it was, I think we could both read, the best Negroni. The best. We've had since being here. And there's a guy there that had a dog and he was very, he couldn't speak any English at all. So we were trying to practice, well, you were trying to practice your Italian. I was just going, yeah, grazie, grazie, yeah, great, perfecto. But I think that animation really helps, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think because you can't speak Italian. You've just got to get by. You've just got to, like, just use You've body just language. You've got to make a little bit of a fool out for yourself. But in the end, we're both trying. Yeah. That was a really loud burp, wasn't it? Did you hear that? It was really loud. He proper went for it. Do you know what? They enjoy their food. They enjoy their release. And on that belchy bombshell, it was time to leave this splendid seaside town. Ciao! It was now my turn to pull the big pink bag. Sounds like a more bed. <laughs> Remember how earlier I said that the train station was super easy to find? Well, finding our train, not so much. You found the door? This man looks like he knows where the door is. Well, it turns out there isn't actually a door. It's just, it becomes, it just turns into a train station. Out of anywhere where you think the clock should be right, you think it'd be a train station. It's not that time. <laughs> I actually paid it on our one though, but I will put money in. Like, oh I, 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 I am buying it, but I didn't know if I can put like it abroad, so I just did it. I'm going to put money in. Yay! Look at these! Oh, they're so cute! All that drinking, eating, relaxing and casually doing sod all made us very tired. And boy did we need all that energy we could muster, because our next stop was slightly less chilled out. We were heading to Bari. No, not the Arai stays was occurring Arai, Bari in Santorini. With a population of more than Gallipoli, it was a bit of a sensory overload at first. Nothing our dubstep bag couldn't cancel out though. Yes. Good thing we had this sweet swoo machine in our fantastic Airbnb. This place, and particularly its host, were perfect. Well and truly rejuvenated and caffeinated, we walked into town and stumbled upon a Banksy exhibition. Be rude not to, I guess. There's something quite strange about going all the way to Italy to see Winston Churchill with a green Mohican. Our next stop was a quirky and cool bar, right in the middle of Bari, called La Cicladera. It smells like alcohol. It tastes like hair on your chest. Ooh, that's good. 
That's nice. Nice, isn't it? Sweet. Yeah. We were heading to the square soon to have some dinner. So after the biggest starter in the history of time, we went for a walk through the very Italian-y back streets of Bari. And it was here where we got a real flavour of the city. Everyone of all ages were out eating, drinking, chatting, dancing, listening to music. It actually makes me quite jealous that we were not from here. We did find a great spot to chow down eventually, but that bruschetta may have taken up more room than we'd first anticipated. God help us all. Ooh. We've run out of runnies. I'm not even hungry, and yet, look. And one clam chowder. It's not a clam chowder. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> it looks nice. It's really good. It looks like rice pudding, but it's really tasty. See that bottle of lemoncello on the table? Yeah, they left it all for us. So it was a one night in Bari. How are you feeling? Delicate. Too many lemoncellos. Too many lemoncellos. They just leave you with a bottle, obviously, so you just help yourself. Um, but yeah, it's not really nice today. Overcast, darling. So now we're getting a, a train, um, um, so a bus to the airport now. And that's it. And as the sugar come down from all the lemoncello and the slight hangover being combated by one last espresso from our machine, I could not help feel an air of sadness. Why did they get rid of CFAX in the UK? And just like that, our Italian adventure is over. So for now, arrivederci. Arrivederci.